Hey out there, Slot Car Land. How's everybody doing this fine Saturday? Hope everybody's been doing well. Um, hope you're getting some racing in. There's been some really cool things. Um, last weekend was the Ohio Cup. Uh, Ron Schmidt won the Ohio Cup. Congratulations to Ron. He's, he races uh, at the fray every year. Got to know him down there, and uh, just great that he won that. Uh, go check out um, all the videos on the Ohio Cup group and uh, just watch some really cool stuff. Uh, we have the Nationals coming up. The Harpa Nationals are coming up soon. So there's some big racing going on. And uh, just just keep on watching and racing and doing all kinds of stuff. Hopefully you guys will get to hit a big race um, of your own here, here soon. It, it's so much fun going to a large race with a lot of people. Um, you get to meet a lot of people with the same interests as you. And get to learn a lot of things when it comes to going to a big race. If you ever get an opportunity to go to the Fray or the Ohio Cup or the Harpa Nationals or any really large race, do it because it is a great time. So uh, today we are going to be um, talking about wiring for the for the three x five layout. Um, we're we're not gonna it's not gonna be a really long episode. Um, we're gonna have to. I need to get some things set up, but we're gonna talk about what you need, what you're gonna need for this project, and um, we're gonna be showing you a little diagram of how the wiring system should work on this layout. Now, this may vary from from layout to layout, and whether uh, depending on what timing system you're using, how old the timing system is you're using and all of that so with the timing system we're using on this track we're using the same timing system that we use on the road course and it has nothing to the power supply is not connected into it in any way so this timing system on my track is about 10 years old now they have changed uh, trackmate has changed his his timing system and everything flows through the central box on his systems now so it's, it'd be a little different if you went with trackmate today compared to this TrackMate system, which is about 10 years ago. So first off, let's just talk about what you guys are gonna need for your wiring for your track. So outside of the obvious, your power supply, your track itself, the other things you're gonna need is you're gonna need some wire. Um, for this one, um, to make it look really nice and have everything you know, all really cool, you're gonna need a wire uh, terminal block. Uh, make sure if you're doing a four-lane track, you need an eight-circuit terminal block. Um, if you're only doing a two-lane, you only need a four. And if you're doing a 16, you would actually need, or if you're doing an eight-lane, you'd actually need two of these. So keep that in mind. Um, these aren't necessary, but I like to use them because it makes things look neater, the little terminal uh, spade terminals. I got two boxes of those. And then you're going to need some screws for your driver stations. So that's what you're gonna need for the project. Also soldering gun, solder. Um, hopefully some really good um, solder prep. I don't have any, so it's gonna be a little hard when we get to that uh, point in this build, but uh, we'll see if I can get some. Um, it really helps when you're soldering to do to have a really good um, solder prep to uh, be able to clean the terminal and the wire and, and, where, you're, and where you're soldering to. The solder sticks just like instantly rather than having to really work at it so um let's um let's get over here and we'll take a look at the diagram and i'll show you how this track how this track is going to be wired so give me a minute i'm going to move the camera and i'll be right back all right now as you can see with the diagram we're using the old g-jet um, power supply as our power supply uh model the other one is hooked up to the track i didn't want to have to unhook it and everything but everything is the same no matter what power supply you're using now if you're using individual power packs um, it would it would be um, even easier. You wouldn't have to do the loops here. You would just hook each power pack up to each terminal going inward, and then you could run it that way as well. But um, for this one, we're using a single power supply for the whole track. So you would take one side. Now this depends. Um, you could either hook this up either way, whether this is positive or negative. If you flip these, your track's going to go one way. If you flip them, they're going track's going to go the other way. So once you get everything hooked up. Make sure, and you got to make sure when you hook your lanes up that you, you could actually end up going the opposite direction on one lane. So just hook up your lanes one lane at a time, test the lane to make sure it's going the right direction, and then you're good to go. So your power supply would come in on each end of your power block. Then you would take each single wire and jump it over to here. 
So you've got each lane for jump, and then you're going the other direction for the other side. And then on this end, which is, um, it depends on how you're hooking it up. So this side is actually red, which would be, this is the positive side. That would go, the actually positive side would actually go to the racetrack. So actually I've got this ass backwards. But you just got to work with it when you're hooking up. Because one side goes to your driver stations. The other side goes to the outside track. And then your other driver station goes to the to the track from the track to the other side. So there's your closed circuit right there. And the only thing that differs down here is if you're using a single power pack, you would just hook one wire here, one wire here for each power pack, wire, 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 without having to do any jumps if you're using single power packs. But it's with this, with a single or with the, with a single power supply. Rather than using a single power pack per lane, with a single power supply, you've got to jump it over and jump it over. So this is a, just a simple diagram to show you um, how you would do it. Your negative side goes to your goes to your driver station. The 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 straight power goes to the track, and then your other wire comes over. So it's real easy. It's real simple. You just have to make sure you, you hook up your wires, make sure you've got your, hook your power supply up, start with one lane at a time, take your wire from the terminal to the track, this one would be soldered to the bottom and then we would, you would use your, your, your terminal clip on the other end and screw it into the terminal. And then you do the same here and out and then the wire would be soldered to the end of your bolt which is where your controller uh, gator clip hooks to. And then, of course, these side, your wire from your power pack to your terminal would also have one of these on each end. One that hooks to your power pack, one that hooks to the, to the, pack, to the terminal wire. So the only soldering you're going to do is here at the driver station on your, your screws, and here on the track for your wires that go to the, to the terminal and to the power, to the uh, driver station is the only soldering you need to do. This is this soldering here is the hardest because you've got to get it. That's why you need some really good solder prep so you don't have to really heat the track up to get the wire to stick. And where you're going to be soldering to is where these little... That's what these little openings here that, that actually open to the rail, that's why these are here. Is so you can solder a wire straight to here so you can actually don't have to use a track terminal as such to um, to wire to the track. Now, if you have a power terminal on your layout, but you're wired to the track, you got to make sure that none of the connections on the bottom of that terminal are still connected to the to the track, or it's going to screw your power supply up. So. If you want to do this the right way, do not use a power terminal on any part of your layout. If you do have one, swap it out or just take all of the connections off the bottom of it so it doesn't screw up with your power supply. So this is the this is your diagram. I'll just let it sit here for a second. Now you gotta remember this diagram may vary depending on the power supply that you have. You may have to run your power supply if you're using the new uh, the new TrackMate timing system, the power supply may go straight into the box that's under the track. And then it may go from there to a, to a terminal block, and then from the terminal block to the track and to the driver station. Now also in this diagram, if you have a relay on your racetrack, that would probably go in after the power block Actually, probably before the power block. It would probably be before the power block because this goes out to the track. So it would probably be before the power block. It would go to your relay, then to the power block, then to the driver stations and the, to the track. So, but for our layout, this is our, our wiring diagram for our layout. Really simple. If you're just using a track that you just want to set up to practice on, this is probably, the, this is, doesn't have a timing system on it. This is how you'd wire your track up. And if you use a terminal block, 
it's really really good and really cool to be able to do it really neat under your track so make sure you find a spot for your power supply preferably up high it's right where you can get at it where you can turn it off and on put this on it depending on the size of your racetrack seeing ours is kind of small this is going to go right up probably in between the driver stations on one side of the track probably the the side that the power will go will be going into and then you can you can run your wires up to your block um, if you keep it close if you keep your power supply close to the terminal block you won't have to have as much wire which means you won't have to secure it in a spot so it doesn't dangle down or anything as you guys remember this is tracks going to be portable so we're going to want to make sure that everything is nice and neat underneath the bottom of this track and then with the 3x5 build we're not going to have much wire going from here to the to the track because if we put this to the closest to the power supply the lanes are going to be really close the only problem the only wire that's going to have any link to it will be this wire to the driver station and from the driver station back to the track um, will be the only two that are really long and they'll be on the opposite side of the racetrack that the power block is on so those would be the longest wires we use but if you put this on the 2x4 you just run it up and across the board to the driver's station and then from the driver's station straight across to the track and it's just going to be really simple so this is the diagram it's really easy really cheap um, most of this that you can to buy for your layout for your wiring is really inexpensive um, if you go and we're going to be cutting out uh, we're going to be using the MDF as you guys can see I have made some driver stations these are four inches long right here we'll be just drilling a hole we'll just be drilling a hole for the uh, bolt to stick out through and then this nut here on this side why you need two nuts on your on your bolt is because you're going to want to put the wire around your bolt around your nut or bolt and then screw the nut down and then solder it and that'll keep it from coming off and then this bolt here this would be on the back side of your mace of your station and this will be on the front side to keep it nice and tight so this doesn't wiggle around or anything so really cool really easy these are um, 25 cents at Ace Hardware. Um, if I remember right, the terminal block is about eight to ten dollars. Um, these I think are like 2.99 for a pack, and then your wire um, depends on your gauge that you're buying. Depends on the price, but anywhere from, I think from five to fifteen, depending on what uh, gauge wire you're using. Um, this is 16 to 10, which is blue which is about the perfect size for, for, your, for your layout to handle the power and everything and just all of that. So, all right, so next time that we get to the build, we're gonna be doing some, some wiring. We'll probably be securing, soldering the wire to the bottom of the track. And then we're going to be probably running, we'll be making the wires for the jumpers. And then we'll probably also be um, putting the driver stations on and and uh, measuring our wire that we need to go from each driver station to the terminal block and then the wires that we need to go from the track to the terminal block which will probably those would be your shortest wires because when we put in the, the power is going to come in on this side of the racetrack so the terminal block will be over here so the wires going from the terminal block to the track will be pretty short the wires going from this station and that station will be fairly short your longest wires are going to be from the two stations over here going to the power block so we'll get that done and then we'll do some other things so the other thing I wanted to show you guys today is when we got looking at the track as you can see here now let me turn on my light over here give us a little more light as you can see after we got done with the the banking we got to looking at this and as you can see we got this little indentation right here from coming off of the banking on the track so what me and Elijah came up with, the whole track now is going to have a slight bank to it. We took these shims that were on top of the sh shorter shims that are these ones you see here. And we just laid them out underneath the track on the other side. So there's going to be four shims on each straightaway. And after you, once you get this down, you can see we got rid of that little dip in the track. So... 
And we're going to have to do that on both sides. I don't have those uh, secured yet. I'm going to have to secure them. I don't have those secured yet, but we'll get those secured here in the next week. And then we're going to have to cut a hole in the base here for our timing system. Actually, wait, hold on. That's the power side. Then we're going to put the power on this side. We're going to put the, the uh, we could actually put them on both sides if we wanted to because we could put the power here over here and, or the timing system here over here and then the, the power here over here, which is I think what we're going to do. We'll have the power on both sides. We're going to have to cut a little tiny um, cut here for the timing system wires to come up through. And then we're going to do a slightly larger hole here in between these two shims for the power supply. So I'll get that prepped in the next two weeks. Actually, the next four weeks, excuse me. It's going to be a little bit by the time we get back to this build because we have the we have the body to finish as well. So I'll get this, these shims for the straightaway secured. I'll get the holes cut in the base done. So we'll be um, all done with that. So the next episode on the 3x5 build, what we're going to be doing is we'll be doing all our wires that we need for the track. From the wires from the from the block to the terminals and then from the wire from the track to the terminal to the block to the block the terminal block is what I'm trying to say I can talk really I can we'll get all those made and everything on camera and then we'll solder the wires to the bottom of the track and we'll see where we're at time wise on that video for that before we um, set everything else up so that's where we're at on the 3x5 build I hope the diagram help you guys in realizing how we're going to wire the track <clears throat> and then next next video we will be actually doing some of the wiring for the track ourselves we'll install the power block we'll start working on the wires from the driver stations i'll have the driver stations cut and ready to go and we'll mount those on the track as well and and all of that so next next episode will actually be actually show you guys actually doing the wiring where today we were just discussing how we were going to do it i wanted to make those two separate videos so it wasn't like one big conglomeration. So you can go back and look at the first video and then look at the second video. So we show you what we're going to do and how to do it. And then the next video will show us actually doing it and how to do it. So hope that helps you guys out. Uh, next week will be a bi-weekly featured car. Um, it should be Elijah's or Shaden's if I, uh, memory serves. And we'll pick one and find it out. I hope you guys enjoyed the racing action from Doug's. Took me a little while to get them up, but they're all up now, so go check those out. We had a lot of fun. Um, and then after the bi-weekly, we'll, be we'll be doing the decals on our paint project. And then we'll let those sit for a couple of weeks. And then um, I'll, uh, I'll primer that body, and then we'll come back and show it. Um, right before we start, we're going to start another one. We're going to do another one. So uh, after that one's done... We're going to show you the next one, and we'll talk about the paint that we're going to do for that. So we're going to continue with uh, um, bodies and the, the 3x5 build. I'm also going to be doing a video that we're going to toss in there as well on how to do a armature, how to, to put a balanced and polished armature on its gear plate and put all the gears and everything on. So be on the lookout for that video as well. <clears throat> we'll prob I'll probably shoot that video, and we may take that video, may take the spot of one of the body builds. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, don't forget to go check out slotcarcrazy.com. Jim Betts is doing a lot of great work there. Um, he's going to start, uh, like we showed all of the race results from the last race. You'll be seeing all of that come this fall when the point series starts. We'll be doing a video on that as well here pretty soon. Um, that series will start in September. So we'll do a video explaining how we're running it, the classes we're running, the class rules. All of that stuff, so when the first race comes up, you guys will know what you're watching and how that all is going to work. So um, we're also going to try and run every race on the west side for their point series as well. Uh, they run a T-Jet and Frey point series over there on that side. We're going to hopefully hit all of those races as well. So we're going to be running two point series this fall, hopefully, if things work out and everything. So that's going to be really fun. And um, all of that good stuff. So you'll find all that information on SlotCarCrazy.com, along with all the other great catalogs and websites and um, all that kind of stuff. So check that out. Also, don't forget to, to support the channel. Go to uh, shop.spreadshirt.com backslash slotcar-crazy. 
get your slot car apparel. I've got new programs that Kyle gave me to try and do some more shirts. I gotta play with them a little bit to see how they work and everything. But there should be some new shirts up on slotcarcrazy.com very soon. Right now it's just a slot car crazy logo. But I'm gonna have some really cool shirts coming up on that as well. So go check that out and I'll announce when the new designs are up and everything. All the money that we make from that channel, from the we make a commission from the shirts we sell, all of that money comes back to the channel. And uh, we need, so we can use that money to do stuff here on the channel to show you guys some great stuff. So uh, go check that out as well. So I hope you guys have a great week. Keep the wheels on the downside, the pin in the slot. Keep racing slot cars. And we'll check you guys next week with the bi-weekly featured car. And then we'll be back the week after that with the body build. And then after that, another bi-weekly featured car. And then we'll be back on the 3x5 build actually doing the wiring on the racetrack. So I hope you guys enjoy the channel. We're over 2,000 now. I want to do something really cool here soon. Hopefully we'll get some money and we'll be able to do a giveaway or something for you guys to celebrate. Thanks everybody for subscribing, watching, commenting, liking the videos and everything. I love you guys and we'll catch you guys next week. I'm out. Bye.